that one of the trends this year is, is corporations negotiating their identity in the open source world. Now, there's a number of different ways that corporations are going about this. One of them that's quite popular is corporations buying out open source companies or open source projects. Uh, a big one that hit the press this year is uh, Sun's purchase of MySQLAB. So we'd like to bring up uh, Tim O'Reilly, who is going to interview uh, Monty Bedinis and Brian Anger. Uh, Monty is the original architect and author of MySQL and currently a distinguished engineer of MySQL at Sun. And Brian Aker is the principal engineer of MySQL at Sun. So please uh, give them a warm round of applause and welcome them back to the stage. Monty, let's put Monty in the center since you're the center of MySQL. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I wanted just to start by, you know, obviously asking you to reflect a little bit on the acquisition. It was, I think, the largest ever open source acquisition. And, uh, you know, MySQL had been looking at going public and, you know, instead ended up getting acquired. Uh, six months in, how does that seem to you guys? Let's see, six months into this. Um, it's actually been really rewarding. Um, there are, uh, you know, my first reaction with it was uh, the, the day that we had the announcement. Was my first question out was, uh, you know, I think I'd asked one of the, the Sunday, so you're going to send me a, a large Niagara to machine from my basement, right? Uh, so, <laughs> free hardware, right? Um, you know, six months later, uh, no, not yet. <laughs> I was told that there's a lot of machines you can access somewhere, but uh, I'm still uh, working on getting the idea of it, the truck backing up to my house. And just nothing else in hardware. Um, it's been actually, it's been really rewarding. Uh, Sun has a really old engineering culture. It's a very, very uh, engineering-driven company. Uh, and you know, the first time I went to one of uh, Greg's, uh, Greg's our CTO uh, at Sun, and went to his uh, staff meeting, it was just a, an amazing meeting with all these engineers who were very uh, thinking, you know, disagreeing and uh, commenting on technologies. And it was just a really rewarding environment to be in. My first reaction was, uh, Thank God we didn't go public. <laughs> because it, because um, I'm truly believing in open source and I was a little skeptical about uh, the trend uh, that uh, you need to make more money and for, and, it, and uh, for doing that you need to do start doing closed source components and that's already started to influence the decision makers within my square. And I just didn't know that if you go public that trend will be continue and that's not good, good for open source. So yeah, so so effectively Sun sort of saved uh, MySQL from the pressures of the public market. Yes. Although or maybe insulated because I don't think Sun is immune to those pressures either. No. Uh, just a lot bigger uh, company so you know for MySQL which is a profitable and growing part of Sun, I think it certainly saves some of that uh, and then six months in, Sun is still trying to figure out what did they buy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's very interesting because Sun, of course, was uh, arguably the first really successful open source company. They, they ended up taking Berkeley Unix private, so to speak. And, uh, you know, that was the first business model. You know, it was still hardware oriented. Uh, they have a, had a great run. In fact, I think they were here at the very first OSCON. I think MySQL was too. So we've had. Uh, you know, both companies kind of be part of all of this. Uh, but Sun has really made it about face, you know, where uh, they started by taking, you know, like Apple, for example, saying what we're going to do is we're going to take the value of what was created in open source and we're going to now create a proprietary company around it. Uh, but now they really, Johnson's made a, a clear commitment to open source throughout the organization. How's that, you know, do you see tensions in the organization around that or are they, is that sort of all the way through? I think it's uh, inevitable to see uh, tension around that. You have engineers who have worked in um, traditionally very closed environments who now see their source code um, having to go out and be public. And for any engineer, that's kind of a, a, a there's a certain moment of truth in that. That is, did we write this thing well? Did we did we miss something? What does this mean? I don't know if I have to get on mailing lists or I hear there's something called IRC that I now have to add that to my daily you know, uh, list of already 
too much information that's coming in. So I think from an engineering standpoint, you know, as an engineer who wants to, to move themselves into open source or wishes to work on open source, it is opening yourself up to an awful lot more input than what you may traditionally have. So, you know, I, what I see when I talk to people in Sun, some people are very much like, we want to get their stuff, we want to get our stuff out there very fast, you know, get people using it as quickly. And then there's other people who are, you know, less, uh, less wanting to actually have any kind of spotlight on, on their work. We'll drink no wine before it's time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I, so you guys are acting as uh, kind of a sort of a, a, a retraining force within Sun. So. Protagonist is my favorite word. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, how, how do you guys, do you guys, how do you guys mentor, you know, engineering at MySQL on Sun? I mean, is there a way, that, is there any formal process where you're teaching open source or is it just by who you are? Actually, we are teaching Sun in two things. First, how does the virtual organization of developers really work? And that Sun is really interested to do that because they're trying to do things uh, more virtual and understanding how to get things, create something where developers will strive and want to be even when they're not in contact with any human beings. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that has started to work out uh, really good. Yeah, right, right. So, so MySQL was fairly unique as a company and being really, really virtual. You had a lot of people all over the world who work from their homes, you know, like Brian. Yeah. And of course, you'll know that you want one when you know, they all get big sun machines, right? Or, yeah. or, 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 they, or will you want one they don't need big sun machines because they're all in the cloud? Well, I think that's <laughs> actually the key there is that the uh, long term, I don't think anybody needs anything more than probably a laptop and an internet connection at this point to do yeah. software development. The, the other part is that uh, there's lots of people in, uh, of the engineers who really believe in open source. And they are really happy that so Sun is opening up. They on the tech meeting where we were, there was people who said that it's really for true, so no, it's really going to happen. And they are seeing us as an enable for things going forward. That's really nice. I mean, lots of enthusiastic people. That's the place to be. So, um, you know, in terms of, of uh, you guys actually have your own projects, sort of independent of the main MySQL. Tree going forward, you know, you're working on Maria yep. and the new storage engine. Yep. Uh, Brian, you recently announced Drizzle, sort of radical rethinking, really forking my SQL. Uh, you know, what kind of support do you have inside Sun for those projects? Uh, my boss's response to Drizzle was uh, when I first explained to it to him uh, a couple of months ago, and I said, "This is what I'm doing." He paused for a second. He goes, "Well." So what it is, it's a, a different, you're going after an entirely different market area and an entirely different niche with, uh, within the ecosystem. And he got that immediately. And as I started telling that same story within the, within the, the uh, lab organization and to the different CTOs and chief technologists, people got that immediately. And that it wasn't so much a, hey, let's go and, uh, you know, there's a certain direction that the MySQL code base has been heading in for, for quite some time now with 5.0 and 5.1. And those features have a very, um, there's a place in, place and a time for those features in one domain, or in actually many domains. Um, but there's domain that is... Specifically, the features added to, to support enterprise. Enterprise, enterprise, and what do we see, like Enterprise 2.0 replacements for, for places where they don't need actually an Oracle, or they need something that they're designing a new application around, where they'll need something like partitioning, or they'll need some other piece that makes up 5.0.5.1. But there is a, a core set of environments where None of, those, none of those features are valuable, and all they do is they extend the product and, and make it actually vulnerable to bugs that really don't mean to be there in the first place. Um, part, of what, uh, part of what actually made me start on Drizzle was a conversation I was having with Rackspace CTO. There's a project I had uh, started uh, formulating a number of months ago, uh, which is called Pandora, which is called Pandora's DB. And it is uh, kind of basically taking a Unix concept of building a cloud database, but not trying to like write everything from scratch, but instead taking out components that exist in open source to build up a database. So for instance, the, the optimizer you would see is actually a, a working system called Gearman. So Gearman is a little piece that's handling that. Um, I needed uh, a component for being able to... Yep, right. yep, another dang good thing from Brad. Yeah, Brad is sort of one of the, un, I sort of saw him these days, but kind of like really one of the amazing forces in the modern open source movement. Just released more pieces of software that keep cropping up. Yeah, I saw his, his curl on, on Google Apps Engine, which uh, you yeah. know, suddenly moves Google Apps Engine yeah. even further down yeah. for people to use. 
but, but I needed a lot of those components. And in some cases, uh, in some cases my, my goal is to, to write them. In the case of Drizzle, I needed that. We had a code base which we could start with and move that direction. Uh, we've been working now for a number of months of improving on Gearman. We have a C version of the server and uh, client worker pieces now that are also written in C. Um, you know, months ago, when, I knew I needed a caching component to this, so we wrote uh, libmemcached, which is a C library of memcached. There, there are pieces, though, that we also know that haven't been written yet. Um, there's what I've been calling a proximity database. There's a, a me and Josh Burkus, who's one of the heads of the Postgres um, development team, have talked about this a bunch, but the need for something which is good for storing location. Um, if you were doing GIS today, you probably are using Postgres. But if you're trying just to store, for instance, proximity data, um, which is something very different, there's nothing out there. Right, that the proximity data obviously is going to become much more important than our phone as a platform. And, hey, I, I'm sitting next to you two guys, and yeah. you know, some application might want to know that. Right. I mean, it's not a it's not a case of a, a graph or you know graph where we know where things link off of. It's not a case of a range where you know a set of objects in a row. It's about actually knowing where something is physically present at any given time and knowing what is around that location and seeing how that moves temporally. And that type is a new form of data store um, that I'm personally hoping not to have to write. I'm hoping that the open source community comes out with because it's obvious when we see you know anything from Second Life to being created to, to you know just real world applications we see on the iPhone today, there's a need for a piece of software there to, that has not been written yet. So oh, God. Okay. the nice thing with the sun, especially for me, and Brian is that Sun has given us more free hands to do what we want to do. And me, I, I, I need to finish the, what I believe is the one of the most critical pieces for, um, for my school just now, and that's the, the, the end of the work. Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting. Mark Shuttleworth talked last night about uh, you know, some Firefox as a model for uh, you know, sort of open source architecture today. And that's something I've talked a lot about, the, what I've called the architecture of participation. And my SQL I was a real breakthrough, I think, with the pluggable storage engine architecture. And you're actually trying to take it even further here with the idea of, of let's strip the database down into you know, a component you know, in, in a system that's architected of, of a set of components. It's that, that old original Unix philosophy, which I think is so close to the heart of open source, and everybody working needs to remember that. You know, do less and then create extensibility mechanisms. Don't build big monolithic pieces of software. And we see, you know, the creeping, you know, uh, monolithic approach that kind of comes in as a, as projects get older. And you guys are, in some sense, kind of going back, saying, no, no, we'll, we'll, we'll put figuring out how to do pieces that work together. I mean, all new features. One of the the key early on. Uh, pieces I made with Drizzle is I decided that first thing is that it's going to be a micro kernel. We're going to have a lot less features internally. All new, any kind of new feature is going to have to come through some form of an interface. In fact, if you want to add an interface for all the code for the interface, you have to reduce the main server by at least that amount of code in itself. So the idea is make it smaller, push it smaller, and actually push things more out towards the edge and less towards the center. Hey, I was saying we should open this to Q&A from the audience. Uh, so if you guys want to queue up the microphones, um, uh, feel free if you have questions for Brian or Monty. And, uh, I'll do that. Uh, so so uh, kind of meanwhile, I, I, I guess I wanted to um, do something uh, that's a little bit like that uh, um, show inside the actor's studio where I just asked for reactions. So uh, quickly, what do you think about Google? So what do I think about Google? Uh, I'm happy that they are making more of their data uh, exportable. I think that is good. When I look at Google's Apps Engine, I have this uh, in the back of my head. I'm kind of wondering if they're turning the entire world into their their own favorite 20% project um, by like getting everybody to like put their apps there. Uh, so I think that's kind of a, an extension of that philosophy. How you have to be good with that participate in open source. I'm just. Uh, very little like you that after some some time there may be nothing else than Google and we need other terms. Okay, how about Amazon? Any reactions to Amazon's company in today's market? You know, um, I think Amazon's an interesting position because they have always been a fairly secretive company and they've suddenly been pushed out into the uh, you know out based on their own innovation. I mean, nobody even had really thought about Amazon when I went and started first talking about like. Uh, uh, EC2 and S3, and I had talked to at the time the, the VP of engineering at Google, and I was at his house and I was going through some notes. And he was, What's this Amazon stuff? And it was interesting how 
the very beginning of that, how little anybody had ever bought an Amazon at all in that marketplace. And now it's really obvious that they're both the innovators and the leaders in that letter of innovation. Just amazing. How about uh, Microsoft? What do you guys think about Microsoft in today's market? I see less and less of Microsoft, which I think is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, they're irrelevant. Um, Apple. <laughs> Microsoft in the audience. I hope that you are going to prove these guys wrong because it's great to have uh, you know, lots of vibrant competition. But uh, it's just interesting to the zeitgeist. Uh, how about Apple? What do you guys think about Apple? I'm more afraid for Apple than Microsoft. They are just too long to be. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of the, uh, I really want I, I really, really want a new iPhone. And at the same token, I'm really hoping uh, Google gets Android out fast enough that it works well enough that I can use it. Uh, but I have to say, the iPhone, ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we open source do anything as insanely great as the iPhone? Hey, well, that's a good question. Why can't open source do anything as insanely great as the iPhone? Well, I'm hoping, you know, there's a lot of uh, stirrings of activity. You know, we see, you know, Firefox for mobile. We do see, you know, Android. We do see mobile. We do see OpenMoco. And by the way, OpenMoco, it's just something that, that really brings home the power of open source is that the first really interesting open local device is not a phone. It's the Dash, uh, you know, internet connected GPS. And that shows how powerful it is when you put source out. Somebody can do something you don't expect. Who would have thought the first you know, popular consumer device would be a, you know, an in-car GPS coming out of that project? Open source made that possible. Back, back there, can you say your name? I can't see you. Uh, Michael Tiedemann. Oh, Michael. Hey, great. You're, in, you're totally in shadow with your hat. And, uh, Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so obviously, in my day job at Red Hat, we have a little bit of experience of acquiring open source companies and seeing what does and doesn't work. And my, my question for you guys is, now that you're sort of six months in, it's a two-part question. One is, what are, the, what are the cool things that you think MySQL will be able to do you know, on the Sun field, and what are the cool things that Sun can do on the MySQL field that we might be talking about in a year? That's sort of that's sort of part one, and then, and part two is, do you see this combination of DNA being more important on things that are happening inside the Sun shell, or more important for the outside world? So the uh, thing that became very apparent within like the first week of of the acquisition was the concept of how MySQL engineers expect companies to work and, and behavior-wise, um, this is a lot of what I call uh, having good table manners and dealing with open source projects. And what the sun thought was is how developers should work with other open source projects were very, very different. And so from that, you could have seen a huge clash of cultures. Um, but in our case, it actually has turned out that um, our pushing of this is what our DNA believes in how companies should behave with other open source projects and how IP rights should work and how you should encourage developers has actually created a, a set of steps of revolution inside of Sun where, you know, a few days ago I got to see looking at the, the first draft of, you know, how Sun is going to start allowing employees to contribute to open source projects. And, uh, you know, one of the biggest belligerents we have internally is the, the head of the uh, Linux Australia, Stuart Smith. And his first, he was the first one to respond, with, which, is, you know, which was amazement of how good it looked. Uh, and uh, it's been amazing to see how Sun has actually been, uh, our, our DNA, which is very small, I mean, we're three, 400 people compared to a, you know, a, a 30,000 some odd person company, and how fast our DNA has been pushing in that direction to uh, have Sun rethink about how it actually works with open source. Because you got a big cheerleader at the top, right? <laughs> yeah, that does actually help. But there, there's a lot of cheerleaders out yeah. there. But yes. And uh, from, from, my, from the other point of view, uh, my, my square has been management driven uh, and not developer driven for the last uh, four years. And Sun is getting us back to our roots. They are allowing us to participate more in the community. The one thing I think that we are totally failed in MySQL is involve the community during the last three years. If you submit the patch to us, we'll accept it and it will be in the product within three years. That's ridiculous. And uh, Sun is going to ensure that that will change. And that's a really good thing. So, uh, 
quick question for you, Monty. Uh, you recently, you know, the, you and David have made some donations to the Software Freedom Law Center and Cambia, which is a source of uh, patent initiative in Australia. Uh, so you've kind of become, as a result of this, to so start to become a philanthropist of, of open causes. Can you talk a little bit about your thinking there and what you're trying to support and encourage? I have a plan to be a good example, and I think that you should follow me up with my donations. <laughs> Thing what you believe in. with the patent lens, they were in desperate need of money to survive in the next few months. And I uh, David was able to help, and that is really good. All right. Hi, thank you. As you're uh, going through asking about various companies, uh, I have a, a question regards to Adobe. They uh, are making it possible for client based uh, uh, MySQL with their Air application. How do you feel about the expansion of? MySQL, Light, and Air through the Adobe platform, and the ability to synchronize databases in client-server environments. Are you, are you think it's great that MySQL has a new uh, place to grow? <laughs> Generally, I'm pretty happy whenever I see any new driver at all uh, that exists. Uh, so, you know, there's a set of slides that David used to travel around with uh, that literally got too big because there were so many drivers and so many uh, projects that we do. Uh, that you know it just got to too big. Um, so whenever anybody says, "Hey, we had another driver," I always think that that's pretty awesome. Can I follow that up with a very general question? How, how do you feel about Adobe's uh, open source openness? <laughs> I, 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 well, I'll, I'll take that. One. I think Adobe, uh, it, you know, is one of the last few great proprietary software companies, and they're they're you know they're flirt they flirt with uh, you know, with openness. They were thinking at one point, for example, of open sourcing Flash, and that's when I went on the Macromedia board. Actually, it was Macromedia pre Adobe, and they kind of just, uh, you know, went, went up to it and kind of sniffed around and kind of backed down. But, you know, again, like every company, they're, they're deeply uh, aware of and influenced by the open culture, and they know they need to become more open. Uh, you know, and, and I think through more interaction, more interoperability with open technologies. We'll get there. And more competition. So we should, uh, uh, we should probably wrap up uh, because we're out of time. Thank you very much.